What's up everybody, it's Skytoon, and today, I'm gonna break down the Splatoon 3 trailer. Before this in-depth analysis begins, please make sure you're subscribed, and give the video a thumbs up. Without further ado, here we go. We start off in the middle of the desert. Trains, cars, and other metals littered this corrupted wasteland. We soon realize what we're looking at when we see a cloaked inkling sitting next to a salmonid. The cloak appears to be torn and tattered, maybe due to a long time stranded in the desert? An option comes onto the screen to choose between an inkling or octoling, boy or girl. In Splatoon 2, by finishing the Octo Expansion DLC, you earned the use of a playable octoling. Here, it's confirmed you can play as one right from the start, without having to unlock anything. Next, you pick a skin tone for your character, and then there's eye color. Now, I could go so in-depth as to say that maybe the eye color options are based on past Splatfest ink colors, but I think that's taking it a bit too far. Maybe. Next is hair. You can now choose between boy or girl hairstyles, even if you pick the opposite gender. This opens a wider variety of character customization combinations than we've ever seen before. The last thing is leg wear, and after that, you confirm if that's what you'd like your character to look like. Then, the camera pans over to little buddy, the salmonid to the left of you, and allows you to choose its hairstyle. Now, I'm not exactly sure what its purpose is, but my guess would be an ally to your character in story mode. As your character comes out from behind the debris, something that caught my eye is the ink tank on the inkling's back. It's flat. Unlike the ink tanks from Splatoon 1, Splatoon 2, or each of the two previous game's story modes. This is a new kind of ink tank. Maybe it'll hold more ink or you could upgrade it further? The next scene shows the Inkling running through the desert with a Salmonid racing behind. In the background, we can see what most believe to be the Inkopolis Tower, which I'll tell you right now, you're wrong. The structure is not built the same. This tower has a square frame around the legs, whereas Inkopolis Tower's legs slope down. Another way you can tell these are different towers is by noticing this one doesn't have the Squid Force logo like on Inkopolis Tower. Plus, it could be due to the sand, but it's not even the same color. This tower in the ground definitely looks more like the Eiffel Tower. I think this game could take place in a location like either Paris or Las Vegas, since they both have Eiffel Towers like this one. Plus, remember Callie and Marie going to the same tower? What we see next is a new weapon that looks like a bow. This seems to have its own mini ink tank built in. Maybe a scope attached, and possibly a compressor to pump the ink through? Here we can see a better look at the ink tank, and it does appear to be slightly curved like I said before. But now, we can clearly see a red button at the top. The next frame, you have to look very closely to see but do you remember the mem cakes you collect throughout Octo Expansion? Well, does this look familiar? Yep, that seems to be almost the exact shape as the Junior Mark mem cake item found in Slap Bracelet Station. We can see a city far off in the distance to the left, but can't make out the buildings yet. As the train approaches, there's different symbols on the front, but I can't figure out what they mean. Inside the train, we can see what looks to be a new character. It's a fish with a shirt. What more is there to really say about that? Sitting next to you, however, is the familiar face of a jellyfish, commonly found in Inkopolis Square. On the way to your destination, you can start to see the same towers of the city that we saw while waiting for the train, now outside of your window. We've arrived in the heart of a new location. There's a lot to take in, so... Let me break down what stood out to me. You can see some signs with colorful artwork along the streets. Lots of windows with clotheslines littering the balconies, air conditioners scattered here and there, vehicles like trucks, cars, and motorcycles. 
fellow Inkling residents with the jellyfish all around, and probably a whole lot more that I'm missing. While panning around this new city, some interesting shots are shown, like a plane flying overhead, a giant pig, which I'm guessing could be either a restaurant or a bank. We even get a look under the pig at this back alleyway. I know this is the same location, because the sign has the same symbols and the blue objects around it. Here we can see stairs, leading up to another unknown location. We get another view of the city, but this time, I see something that catches my eye. Remember earlier when I said the tower in the desert didn't have the squid force symbol? Well this tower to the right does. You see the same symbol on Inkopolis Tower right before you enter to go into battle, which means that this tower acts as the same kind, the place you enter to jump into battles like Turf War. We keep getting more angles, and now we see a better view of the tower straight ahead, with stairs leading up to the entrance. To the left, we can see the motorcycle and truck from earlier, and what looks to be a dojo or training area behind them. On the right is something that reminds me of the great zapfish, except this is a snake. It seems to wrap around the building and has a crown on top of its head. I wonder what all of this means. Something cool about this tower that Inkopolis Tower didn't have is electronic moving sides that show ink dripping down the sides of the tower. How cool is that? The taller building in the back is the same as we saw before when waiting for the train, yet we still don't know what it contains. This next part gives us a look into everything new coming to Turf Wars. Strangely enough, you now start the battle in the air. Metal boxes will carry you and your teammates in squid form. Once everyone is ready, you can pick a location and shoot yourself anywhere on the map. Other symbols on the ground show where your teammates are launching, so you don't run into them. Of course, Inklings and Octolings will have new headgear, clothes, and shoes. But the most exciting part is the new weapons. What you're seeing here are new versions of the Blaster, Roller, Scope, and the new Ink Bow weapon. On the other side is new versions of the Slosher, Splatter Shot, Splatling, and Nozzle Nose. We get to see the Ink Bow in action for the first time as it fires three shots at once, and we see two new movement styles for squids. Those being a squid roll that allows them to twirl out of their ink, and a squid surge which allows them to swim up walls very fast and jump out at the top. This weapon right here looks like the new version of the Ink Zooka found in Splatoon 1, so maybe they're bringing back some old weapons but revising them? Here we get a clear look at the map. We can see fish bone prints along the floor, caged domes in the sky, and some big bone fish wrapped around signs. Please don't let one of these be the great zap fish. The new weapons and clothing items I mentioned earlier get to be seen up close in a few shots, and what the crab? This ball unravels to reveal a metal crab. Some people think this could be a new mode, but I think it'll be a new sub-weapon. The crab is armed with cannons on its claws, and out of its mouth. There's a clearer version of the new Ink Zooka, and then that's the end of the trailer. We're jumping back into the ink in 2022. I've put a few official statements about Splatoon 3 on the screen. So pause this video if you'd like to read over these. What did you think? I believe I uncovered a lot of details that might have been missed the first time around. If you saw something I missed, let me know on Twitter or Instagram. Both links are in the description below. If you learned something new from this video, be sure to leave a like and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Please do me a favor and share this video around to some friends too so they can try to see some things that they might have missed. I am overly hyped for Splatoon 3, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.